Wouldn't it be great if every time you spoke, people listened? Or if you could make decisions and people had to follow them? Or if you commanded so much respect that people had to stand every time you walked into the room? Sound too good to be true? Well, our government's judicial branch has a job that can give you all this and more. You can be a judge. As a judge, you'll get to be in charge of your very own courtroom. You'll get to sit behind a big desk they call a bench, and you'll get to say cool things like, order in the court. But being a judge is more than just about wearing black robes and pounding the gavel. As a judge, you'll get to help people. People never come to court because things are going great in their lives. When people come to your courtroom, it's because something is wrong and they can't fix it on their own. Sometimes what's wrong is a person is accused of committing a crime. We'll call this kind of case a criminal case. Other times what's wrong is people will have a disagreement about something and they'll want you as a judge to figure out who's right. When people with disagreements show up in your courtroom, you'll call that a civil case. I know what you're thinking. Criminal, civil, I'm a judge. Let's get this trial started. But don't reach for that robe just yet. Before you walk into your courtroom, you'd better know what the trial's gonna be about. That means you need to read all the paperwork the two sides gave the court, starting with the complaint. The complaint is where one person explains why they're coming into court by writing down everything they think the other person did wrong. Then you'll read the answer. That's where the other person gets to write down their side of the story and respond to everything that they've been accused of. After the answer, there's... Well, let's just say most cases have a lot of paperwork to go through. Looking through these files gives you an advantage because you'll know everything both sides are going to tell you before you even set foot in the courtroom. All right, you've got your robe on, you're sitting behind the bench looking important, and a trial's about to begin. Now what? As the judge, what will you actually do? All trials have one thing in common. Someone has to figure out what really happened. In some cases, you, the judge, would get to do that. But usually, a jury gets to the side. A jury is a group of regular people who listens to everything during the trial and then decides who wins. But just because there's a jury doesn't mean you can sit behind your bench and listen to your iPod and play computer games. Most judges do have computers at their bench, but it's usually to look up court documents, not to surf the internet. During the trial, lawyers from both sides will tell the jury their versions of what happened. They'll show the jury all kinds of evidence to try to prove they're telling the truth. There will be witnesses to listen to, pictures to look at, and maybe videos to watch. As a judge, you're more like a, like a referee in a sports game. Uh, there are lots of rules of what lawyers can and can't do in a trial, and you have to pay close attention to make sure they play by those rules. For example, a lawyer might say, OBJECTION! if they think the lawyer on the opposing side broke one of the rules, and you'll get to decide whether they really did or not. If so, then you get to say, OBJECTION SUSTAINED. If not, then you'll say... OBJECTION OVERRULED! At the end of the trial, when the lawyers are all done showing evidence to the jury and telling the jury their side of the story, it will be time for the jury to decide who wins. In order to do this, the jury will have to decide whether anyone broke the law. That's hard to do if the members of the jury don't know all the details of the laws involved in the case. This is where you, the judge, have another job to do. You have to tell the jury exactly what the law is so they don't make a mistake. And the jury's decision is called a verdict. And it's read aloud in the courtroom. We find the defendant guilty. After that, the trial is over. But is the case really over? I hate to break this to you, but you're not the only judge in the judicial branch. While you've been working at the trial court level, there are judges above you in the Court of Appeals and judges above them in the Supreme Court. The losing side in that trial you just had can take their case to the next court above you and try to have their decision overturned. This is called taking the case up. It's also called making an appeal. It's kind of like taking an elevator up to the next level. When you become a Court of Appeals judge, your job will be different. For one thing, there won't be any trials. The Court of Appeals is only for cases that have already been through a trial and gotten a verdict. Usually, the losing side will be arguing that the verdict was wrong, and you'll have to decide whether or not a mistake was made in the trial court. You won't get to make a jury do all the work either, because on a Court of Appeals, there are no juries. But don't worry, because when you're on the Court of Appeals, you'll get to work with a team of judges. Usually there will be three of you sitting at the bench listening to the lawyers. Most of the time, all three of you will agree how to decide the appeal. Sometimes though, two of you will decide the appeal by majority vote, and the third judge will disagree with the majority. If so, we call that third judge a dissenting judge. If you decide the trial court made the wrong decision, usually you'll send the case back to the trial court to fix the mistake. If you decide the trial court was right, however, you will affirm the trial court's decision by leaving it alone. 
The losing side in the Court of Appeals can take their case up one more level, to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the country. Yeah, yeah, I know. You want to be a Supreme Court judge. Well, the first thing you need to know is that you won't be called a judge up there, because judges on the Supreme Court are called justices. There are only nine justices on the U.S. Supreme Court. Each one was handpicked by the President of the United States and then voted on by the Senate. The best thing about being on the U.S. Supreme Court is that when you make a decision, it is the supreme law of the land. That means, as a Supreme Court justice, you're going to have an awful lot of responsibility. When you make a decision, you can't just think about the two people involved in that one case. You'll have to think about how your decision will affect everyone in the country who's in a similar situation. Of course, no matter what kind of judge you are, people are still supposed to rise when you enter the courtroom. And they're supposed to call you your honor. You know, that sounds pretty good. <laughs>